Here are 13 things that are absolutely useless in Stardew Valley. I know why you get married in Stardew Valley, it's for a free star drop, am I right? But what the heck is this here, a crib? Is this supposed to hold children? No, I know exactly why we have a crib in here. It's so that we can head to Rob and ask her to remove it and replace it with absolutely anything else. Because children in Stardew Valley are only here for one reason, to tick a box for perfection. Children mean nothing in this game. You could spend an entire year or two or even three years working to complete the community center. The act of completing it is very important as you will then get access to the wizard store and you will get access to Ginger Island. But what about the building that we spent hours restoring? What, what about the actual community center? What value does it provide? From my experience, it just causes Clint to not work on Fridays. After completing the community center, you will most likely never visit it again. What we need is a reason to be here. Maybe a festival or a unique crafting machine that can only be found in the community center but until then goodbye see you never while a community center festival could be cool the novelty will wear off just like all of the festivals in stardew valley the first time you attend the festival it is truly amazing so much to see do and experience the second time you visit it it is also pretty fun it has this nostalgic feeling from the last year but what about the third or fifth or 15th time yeah the festivals are exactly the same every single year after seeing them a couple times you may even completely skip them and do something else it is a hard but unfortunate reality. You know that there are a bunch of amazing buildings in this game. Your farmhouse is incredible. Barns raise the most profitable animal in the game. And then we have the mighty shed, a building that will save you a tremendous amount of space. And then we have two buildings that are absolutely useless. You could even call them pure decorative buildings. The well allows you to fill your watering can, but there's water all over your farm. When would you actually use this thing? Never? I thought so. And then we have the mill, a building that refines bees wheats and unmilled rice. Sounds great, right? Well, those things sell for basically nothing. You are better off planting something else. You might argue that you could save money by not having to buy flour or sugar from Pierre, but we do that so infrequently it will take a very long time to pay back the 2,500 gold this thing costs. Build these purely for aesthetics. Swords are the most reliable weapon in the game, they have incredible range, attack really fast and they do a very good amount of damage. Hammers are insane, if you exploit their special move you can and will one shot anything that dares come in your way. These two weapons are just that good but there is a third weapon type, the dagger and yes you can sort of make the dagger work but the dagger can only strike in one direction. It does not strike in an arc and the range is pitiful. The truth is a dagger can never and I mean never compared to a sword or a hammer. In the early game you might accidentally stumble onto a really good dagger with higher damage numbers than your sword or club, but you will most likely still trash it. The dagger is an easy way to die to even the weakest of enemies. Enough about weapons, let's talk about rings, incredible rings. The napalm ring, good old fashioned iridium bands, lucky rings, these are all essential to your playthrough. These are no brainers. Then you have really good rings that are more situational like the ruby ring, the hot java ring and most definitely the crab shell ring. But why oh why does the topaz ring exist? Did you know that the topaz ring will increase your precision? A stat that is supposed to reduce the likelihood of you missing a hit on an enemy. Some Sounds good, right? No, because it is impossible to miss. Precision is not implemented in the game. The topaz ring is just as good as wearing nothing. There are so many gosh darn amazing professions in this game. The artisan profession will increase the value of your artisan goods by 40%. The botanist profession will ensure that you only harvest iridium quality truffles. Even the fighting professions increase your overall damage by a ton. There is no doubt that these are incredible, but what if they are only incredible because some of the other professions in this game are worthless. Like the tapper profession for example, this waste of space of a profession will increase the value of all syrups obtained by trees by 25%. Wow, thanks I guess. Then we have the tracker profession, this will add these tiny little arrows onto the edge of the screen to show you where forageables are. Um, surely we need this right? The tracker profession does do something else as well, it will show you where panning spots are as well. 
So let's talk about this entire panning feature. There's only one time in the entire game where you would actually use your copper pan and that is when you are searching for lucky rings at the dig site on Ginger Island. After you have found two lucky rings you might as well drop that copper pan into the trash. The second best use for the copper pan might be just to use it as a hat. Now on to processing machines, furnaces are crucial for any playthrough, kegs will make you rich, even preserve jars are good and cheese makers are the best way to get easy reliable food for the mines. But as you might know, not all processing machines are made equally like the lovely little worm bin for example. The worm bin is really expensive to craft and what does it do? It produces between 2 and 5 simple bait every single day. According to the wiki, if you sell the resources used to craft the worm bin, it should take 267 days to pay for itself. What? Yeah, just buy bait from Willy, it's cheap. Truffle oil looks great, right? It increases the value of your truffles and will generally make you more money. Well, if you are using the botanist profession, which you definitely should be using, then you will make an extra 150 gold with truffle oil. Is that worth the 6 hours it takes to process them? Maybe. Let me know how you feel about truffle oil and the oil maker in the comments below. Robin is one of the most important and helpful villagers in the game. She can upgrade your house, build incredibly important buildings for you and sell a bunch of resources for a moderate to good price. So we should thank her by giving her gifts. Eventually she will reward our kindness with the recipe to craft music blocks. Yeah, these little blocks that make a sound when you walk past them. Have you ever used these besides getting some golden walnuts on Ginger Island? Have you ever tried to make music with these? I know highly dedicated people like this person can actually make songs but what about you? No? Same. Clint might not be my favorite villager but he does still provide a lot of value. He will upgrade our broken weak tools into absolute machines of pure efficiency. It doesn't get any better than this except for the trash can. Yes, you see this little trash can in your inventory. You can upgrade that thing and doing so is absolutely useless. It will allow you to reclaim a bit of gold on items that you trash. But let me ask this, what kind of items do you trash? Because I only trash items of absolute no value. 60% of zero is still zero. Mushroom trees are so cool, right? They can make your farm look truly unique. You can turn them into candles and you can even place a tapper on them to produce mushrooms daily. Until you realize that these trees will almost exclusively produce weak, pathetic mushrooms with no value. We want purple mushrooms, but you will almost never get them. Don't expect much from your mushroom trees. There are so many amazing cooked meals in this game that will tremendously help you out in your playthrough. Like spicy eel, coffee, magic rock candy, crab cakes, ginger ale and even sea foam pudding. Wait, that is basically the only good cooked meals in the entire game. What about the rest? Yeah, let's be honest, they only exist to check a perfection box. They suck, it really does seem that they do nothing. While these things might be considered useless, this video here contains 11 things that you thought were useless but are actually incredible. Subscribe for more Stardew Valley videos but for now, I will see you in the next video.